get away with nothing. I mean, crazy. y'all to know that you can't get away with nothing. They, I saw a show one time on one of the shows that a man killed himself. They brought him back to life and charged him. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they got all kinds of stuff going on now. You just, you just can't get away with nothing. <laughs> Wow. Well, this has been a hot mess. We are now 30 minutes past the hour, so we are going to wrap this up. Now, this Jesse Smollett case certainly has people talking, had us talking. But besides us, I mean, you can, there's the police, the district attorney, the in- entertainment world. Like, everybody's talking about this. So, you know, um, last words about this. Jesse, I hope you get help. I hope whatever demons you're going through that caused this are eased and let's go let's go to the break so we can get into this millennial stuff we'll be right back you're listening to straight no chaser we'll be right back Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The path to happiness is not the easy one, but taking drugs will not make it easier. Many people got lost and end up losing their life to drugs. If you or anyone that you know is within that path, don't be afraid to seek for help. Visit www.adk.gov.my for information related to drug abuse. So, know your path. This message is brought to you by the National Anti-Drugs Agency. Where I wanted to quit, in the back of my mind, I told myself I have to quit. And just that day when I reached for that cigarette, I'll never forget it, with my son looking at me. And it was like a bolt of lightning hit me where I finally realized the big picture of what year after year and cigarette after cigarette had done. And I said, that's it. I'm done. I quit. Took them a whole pack, brand new pack. Took them, threw them out the window, and I don't litter. But I was, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I know it's going to kill me. It's going to be cancer. If I don't have to make it sooner than it needs to be. He, he was shocked, and he says, I really hope he means that mom. You're listening to Straight No Chaser. So let's get back to your girl, Ambeezy, Pastor C., Thin Bad and the Chief.
We are back, good folks. We are back. We are back from the break. Talking about Jesse Smollett, and we're gonna wrap it up. But before we do, we got you know, this story is is unraveling as we've been talking about in the first half hour. You know, it's unraveling at an alarming <laughs> at an alarming rate. It is. I mean, that there's, it's there's something every everywhere you go, it, it there's there's pieces falling all out of this. This is just crazy. I don't know what it is. It's like an episode um, of Empire. It yeah, really I mean, is. you know, and it's funny, it was going on the last week when they saw the two people who I said, I wonder if, because at that point, Virginia was getting all the news. That's you right. know, they had the, the governor, and lieutenant governor were catching hell. I said, that's probably who the two people of interest are. They probably went over there to get, get <laughs> Jesse and get everybody <laughs> off of there because they had a whole lot going on too. But because nobody said nothing about Virginia this week, everybody talking about Jesse. Jesse ain't right. holding no office. He ain't making no political decisions. Trump's over here trying to build up the wall. Everything's going on. Everybody looking at is Jesse. What's Jesse doing? Can you believe Jesse? Jesse is the is he probably be on the cover of Time magazine next week. That's right. For lying. For making up a lie. Meanwhile, we're gonna have a wall somewhere. Every, every all the states are up in arms. They suing the president. The president's <laughs> talking crazy. Ain't nobody talking about blackface or clan suits or nothing. But these nooses. Every, but we're talking about Jesse, with who carried who who made his own noose. <laughs> And and you talking about giving somebody enough rope to hang themselves? He done gave himself enough rope to hang himself with oh. this dumb ass story that he put out there. <laughs> did you really say so, that? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh -uh. I mean, he put wow. it out there. I mean, pun, pun intended. Pun intended. I mean, that's that's just what he did. That's how I feel about it. I mean, again, Man. you know, I don't have, I, I don't have, in the instance itself, the comedian me doesn't have the, the comedian doesn't have any sympathy, <laughs> but. You know, well, on, the, on the pastoral well, side, I do. I'm like, this brother needs some help. <laughs> he needs to see somebody. He needs to get Ayala to fix his life. He, something needs to happen. Uh, Ayala will make quickly. him cry. Well, well what, does right. the, cry. what does the pastoral comedian say? Pastoral comedian say? To say this is something. You need Jesus. That's what the pastoral <laughs> comedians say. He you need Jesus, Jesus, boy. Now, so go sat, sat down somewhere <laughs> and rest your nerves. That's the problem. That 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 brings us right to. He's a millennial in the Ambezi, a millennial. Oh no a gen, no, he's a gen a gen X. He's an elemental P X Y Z. Yeah, whatever. Don't I don't put know. him. Don't put him with us, please. Why can't he just be a fool? <laughs> why why we gotta have all of these other? Because then because you're gonna you're gonna end up labeling the whole class right. of whatever they put him in as crazy. Uh, but 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 they are. But you know this whole. It might tie into this whole millennial thing. I think yeah. I don't know, Chief. What? You, how, but really, on the real tip, I'm I'm gonna defer. Like the Chief defers to me when it's something political. <laughs> when you know, when it's something legal like this, how do you think this thing is gonna is gonna end up? Since since you were so prophetic in your in your statement, you know, how can you do it? What's yeah. what's happening next? Well, Wait, I, how's it gonna end? Well, I think that you're going to probably see them look at some type of of mental illness thing or stress related situation that that made him do this you you're going to see that kind of thing play out and you'll probably of course you'll see I'm not sure whether they're bringing charges via the grand jury or how the, they're doing it in Chicago but you'll probably see some formal charges coming up here soon you'll also see the the perp walk if they if they have him turn himself in or if they go get him so uh it, you know it's 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 just going to be a, a a sad ending no matter how you look at it. But, you know, I, I have to say this. This goes right into what you were saying just before we took the break about how lack of historical knowledge may have also contributed to this. When you think about if you were aware of how people used to just accuse races of people of doing things and all the pain that, that, had, that brought, particularly for the African-American community, you wouldn't want to be a part of any foolishness like this. Right. And so right. and and I think that goes to the the second part of our of our show when we're talking about how lack of historical knowledge and maybe that's something that the old school folks did we removing have zero. removing these types of things and discussions from the history classes have we created another monster. So I think that kind of goes right to what um Ambezi wanted mm -hmm. to talk about. You know, okay, so let's start with this. This is actually a perfect segue because, you know, 
a lot of the things that millennials try to protest and try to be vocal about, um, they often get criticized. You know, our generation is like, oh, they always, they're such babies. They always have something to say about everything, so sensitive and, and all this stuff. But when there is an issue that is worth protesting for, it's like, oh, well, they protest it for a week and they don't stick with it. And, you know, I'm glad that you brought the historical context into this because it is a fact that we simply do not, we don't get the same opportunities that you guys had growing up to understand, to understand these things. You know, when, when, when the civil rights era was happening, there were people protesting relentlessly, like out on the streets every day, boycotting every day until changes were made. But I mean, if you even look into a lot of textbooks these days, they don't even talk about stuff like that. So I, I really wanted to pick you guys' brains about the state of our generation. And quite frankly, I'm more worried about the generations that come after us because it's like, you know, at least people my age, I have I have been blessed to to grow up on the east side where on the east coast, sorry, on the east coast where our African American history specifically was taken taken very seriously. They really gave us an in depth education, no matter what school you went to. Black History Month was celebrated, all that kind of stuff. When I moved out here to Vegas, I remember I was so shocked because my junior year of high school out here, we did not have a Black History Assembly. We really, we barely did anything about it. So. You know, I really wanted to I really want to hear your opinions on how the these this lack of information, lack of history being embedded in us and these lack of resources are affecting the way that we're moving forward as a generation. Because I think that there are a lot of things that we want to change. There are a lot of things that we really do want to see happen, but it's almost like it's almost like this never-ending cycle of just going back and forth. It's like, okay, you guys don't care, and then you guys do care, but you don't know how to do this, and you don't know how to go about it this way and go about it that way. But it's like, how are we supposed to know when we have not been educated on e- on what even happened in the past? So what do you guys think about that? Well, I remember when we were having this discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about, um, you know, just looking at, Things that were should be sacrosanct in in the community. We were talking about the whole blackface thing, and you know there there has to be certain things that the community should just say no, you can't do it. And and one of the things that we talked about was that if you don't necessarily understand your history, for example, when you look at the use of the N word. Now, you see it in videos, you see it, you, you know, you hear it in the schools, you hear it everywhere. You even hear, everywhere. You even hear um, uh, children from other races referring to each other as the N-word. Yep. And that, I mean, calling each other the N-word. Now, and we don't call them out. Right. Now, if we really were serious about our history and we, we just, just made it very clear that that word has such a degrading, demoralizing, and inhumane stigma attached to it when it was used, you know, for example, you know, uh, African Americans coming home from the war in full uniform, uh, doctors, and and just hardworking citizens being referred to as as boys and N-words and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And, but we haven't done that per se. And now you, you see it in, in the videos, you see it in the, in the songs and in the lyrics, and, and even some of the entertainers say, hey, well, you know, I use it in my routines and so forth. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, again, that word is, is just a terribly destructive thing, and that also contributes to things like that. But if you're not providing historical references, you know, right. the books that your children are using in school, they lack, the, they lack that insert. That talks about the Middle Passage. Right. That talks about the, you know, uh, all of the, the 